Many irrigation electrical problems can be traced to improper or poor wire splicing techniques. Poorly made splices can lead to costly problems, so it is important to make splices correctly when they are needed. In older systems, it often makes sense to eliminate poorly made splices when they are discovered, even if they have yet to fail. In this video, we will review the wrong way and the right way to make irrigation electrical splices. Let's take a look at some common electrical splices that might be used in interior wiring and see why they will fail in an exterior environment. First up is a traditional connection where wires are twisted and then wrapped in electrical tape. While the use of multiple layers of tape might appear to protect the splice, it's a false sense of security. In fact, there are still small pathways where moisture can enter the splice. Once moisture invades a splice, it's going to cause corrosion. And corrosion is what makes the splice go bad. Corrosion acts like an insulator. It builds up the electrical resistance in the circuit. It causes voltage drop. Eventually, the voltage drop becomes bad enough that either the valve does not receive enough voltage to operate correctly, or no current passes through the connection at all. As the resistance in the circuit builds, the amp flow also has to go up to maintain the wattage necessary to still operate the solenoid. Higher amperage means more heat and more failures of solenoids and even irrigation controllers. Here is a second example of a common bad splice, a traditional plain wire nut. If we look at it, there is also a pathway for moisture to enter. Sometimes, inexperienced users will attempt to waterproof indoor splices with a coating or sealant. This is a risky practice, because not all pathways for moisture will always be sealed. Remember that whether splices are buried, placed in the humid environment of a valve box, or used above ground in the landscape, they will be exposed to moisture. Moisture inside the splice leads to corrosion, and corrosion will cause them to fail. Why take a chance on a critical yet inexpensive part? There are a wide variety of irrigation electrical connectors that are approved for outdoor and direct burial use. The most common is a twist on style that contains a water repellent grease or sealant. To use these, you strip off a wire about one half the depth of the connector. A typical connector can be used for up to three wires. Place the stripped wires side by side and then twist on the wire connector with a clockwise motion. This will draw the wires together and into the spring mechanism inside the body of the connector. Stop twisting when you feel the resistance increase. Give each wire a tug to make sure the connection is secure. If the wire falls out, you may have used the wrong size connector. The manufacturer's package will specify the wire sizes you can use with the connector. Do not use a connector that is too big or too small for the wires you want to join. Do not try to add additional wires into an existing splice. They are not going to stay. These connectors are not reusable because they will use some of the encapsulated sealant if you pull the wires out. Always start with a fresh splice if you have made a mistake. The second type of connector is a gel filled tube. These are commercial grade splices used for larger projects. They often are compatible with much larger wire sizes. This connector consists of the traditional twist on wire nut and a tube that the nut and splice are placed into. Here, you simply strip the wires, twist on the wire nut using a clockwise motion and then place the completed assembly into the gel filled tube. The wires are arranged to the sides and then the lid is closed to seal the splice. This style is very reliable and has been proven for decades. The last type of splice is a clamp style connector. With many of these connectors, no wire stripping is necessary. Wire is shoved into the connector, then the clamp is squeezed to pierce the wire jacket and make the connection. Gel held up inside the connector creates the waterproof seal. No matter what splicing technique you choose, you will want to make all splices using a correct and waterproof procedure. If you spot a splice that has not been made correctly, you should replace it to avoid problems in the future. If possible, Place splices inside of a valve box so they can be accessible for future inspection. Also, include plenty of slack wire at each splice location so that it can be moved for visual inspection. Following the correct techniques will result in splices that will last for the life of the system. Regency Wire offers additional videos to help you with your irrigation systems on our YouTube channel, Regency Wire.